it's Rory Cosio. I want to welcome you to our first podcast. I'm with Codella, an organization that teaches underprivileged Hispanic girls coding and entrepreneurial skills, and we have a few speakers here today. I'm Romy Bhatia. I'm the executive director at the Idea Center. It's a center for entrepreneurship and innovation that has a four-year history at Miami Dade College, and we serve both the MDC community of students, staff, and faculty, and the community at large. So anyone from Miami Dade can come into the Idea Center. Hello, I'm Sandra Martinez, and I am the New Student Center Director at Miami Dade College Wolfson campus. The New Student Center has the privilege of introducing the college to the community of learners, whether it's elementary school students trying to get their hands dirty with uh, learning how to leverage new technologies in our Idea Center, or whether it's in our Culinary Institute or in the Fashion Institute or taking advantage of any of the summer camps that we have through our continuing education and going all the way through middle school age, high school, college, and even adult learners who already have a degree that want to come back and sharpen their skills either for promotion or for new career redirections. We also do a lot in entrepreneurship, but I'll just touch on technology. So for anyone of any age I in the digital economy, if you want to be able to learn the skills, uh, gain the knowledge to be able to uh, go out into the workforce, uh, the Idea Center is a great place to acquire those skills. So for example, we teach a range of things in the technology space. We start by teaching coding. Uh, we offer Apple Swift, which is an introduction to how to develop uh, apps, mobile apps, on the iOS platform. We also teach CS50X, which is a really exciting class. It's a Harvard uh, curriculum, and we are one of three colleges, uh, institutions of higher education that offer it. So it's Harvard, Yale, and Miami Dade College. And CS50X is your entry into the world of computer programming and software development. We also have Generation IT. So we provide an opportunity for students, male or female, of, uh, of any age who are interested in acquiring the IT skills, so certifications like A plus and Network Plus, that they can then get those certifications and then we help them with job placement. So there are programs like that, and then there are new programs like something called IoT, Internet of Things. With all of these billions of connected devices today, how will that impact the jobs of the future? And we are offering a class called the IoT uh, of Things. So we are offering the opportunity to learn both the software side and then the hardware. So like a Raspberry oh, Pi kit, a little bit of everything. Yeah. A little bit of everything. So, uh, we teach a lot on web development, and so when it comes to the T, the technology, we will meet you where you are as a student. So if you walk in and you have no background with technology and you just want to learn, we'll start you at the appropriate class. If you have some experience, we'll give you an opportunity to take one of the more advanced classes. So it really just depends on where the person who walks into the Idea Center is coming from. For students under the age of 18, um, there are rules uh, to be able to take a class at Miami Dade College and be enrolled. Um, we've had students as young as 13 years old who are duly enrolled um, or are being homeschooled that came and took our web development class. So what we really look for is the passion and the desire to want to learn a topic, not necessarily uh, whether you meet an age requirement for most of our programs. Not all, but for most of them. We also do a lot in entrepreneurship, but I'll just touch on technology. So for anyone of any age I in the digital economy, if you want to be able to learn the skills uh, gain the knowledge to be able to uh, go out into the workforce. Uh, the Idea Center is a great place to acquire those skills. So, for example, we teach a range of things in the technology space. We start by teaching coding. Uh, we offer Apple Swift, which is an introduction to how to develop uh, apps, mobile apps, on the iOS platform. We also teach CS50X, which is a really exciting class. It's a Harvard uh, curriculum, and we are one of three colleges, uh, institutions of higher education that offer it. So it's Harvard, Yale, and Miami Dade College. And CS50X is your entry into the world of computer programming and software development. We also have Generation IT. So we provide an opportunity for students, male or female, of, uh, of any age, 
who are interested in acquiring the IT skills, so certifications like A plus and Network Plus, that they can then get those certifications and then we help them with job placement. So there are programs like that, and then there are new programs like something called IoT, Internet of Things. With all of these billions of connected devices today, how will that impact the jobs of the future? And we are offering a class called the IoT uh, of Things. So we are offering the opportunity to learn both the software side and then the hardware. So like a Raspberry oh, Pi kit, a little bit of everything. Yeah. A little bit of everything. So uh, we teach a lot on web development, and so when it comes to the T, the technology, we will meet you where you are as a student. So if you walk in and you have no background with technology and you just want to learn, we'll start you at the appropriate class. If you have some experience, we'll give you an opportunity to take one of the more advanced classes. So it really just depends on where the person who walks into the Idea Center is coming from. And for these programs, there's no age limit? Nope. For students under the age of 18, um, there are rules uh, to be able to take a class at Miami Dade College and be enrolled. Um, we've had students as young as 13 years old who are duly enrolled um, or are being homeschooled that came and took our web development class. So what we really look for is the passion and the desire to want to learn a topic, not necessarily uh, whether you meet an age requirement yeah. for most of our programs. Not all, but for of most course. of them. How interesting. My next question will be, um, Sandra, so how important are role models and why and who is yours and what impact have they had on your life and your career? For more than one reason, but the, the, a big reason why who role models are and how they shape us is, is important because I remember being more or less your age and hearing someone that I had admired and looked up to fall from grace uh, to a certain extent and it's not until later on that you realize that people are in our lives for perhaps seasons. So maybe uh, it, my my idea of role models is a little different. People come in and out of our lives to serve a very particular purpose, to teach us lessons, even if it's what not to do. So role models are very important. And from a from a professional viewpoint, I would share that it's important to find someone who's going to support you along the way whether it be a teacher or whether it be an industry professional or even someone who shares your passion but has found a different way of delivering it. And um, that's why institutions and programs and agencies like the Idea Center are so important because they provide that network of industry experts to connect you with potential role models or just that expertise to get you to that next step. As far as who is my role model, I think one of my early role models has to be my grandmother. And my grandmother was someone who always wanted to be a teacher, but couldn't. Her father would not allow her. Her father, you know, obviously we're talking about someone who grew up in a very different world in a very different time period. And she, it wasn't until she got married that while her husband was at work, my grandfather, she was actually the classroom teacher for the, for the children in her neighborhood. But she never had that opportunity, and maybe that's why from, very, from a very young age, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Um, after that, I think going while I was in college, I looked up to one of the associate deans in my global awareness program at Florida International University, um, I, I was I was in love with the idea of impacting so many people just through very basic concepts of access. And throughout my profession, I've had different women who uh, were either executive directors or deans at, here at the institution inspire me and push me to get to that next step in my career. So uh, without a doubt, People, the people that you surround yourself are very, very important. And even when and if they fail you, it's okay. Because I, without a doubt, people are in your life for seasons and they're there to teach you something. And as long as you're able to leverage that lesson, it's always a good experience. Um, so for both of you, why is it important to empower women and other minorities um, to enter STEM fields and other tech fields? Uh, from someone who's not in the tech field and at times can be quite intimidated and 
including getting my cell phone and throwing it across the room because it's not exactly doing what I want it to do. Um, I think it's important to inspire women because you never know when the next big idea is coming or from where. And I think, uh, I think people miss opportunities or, or they don't allow people to stand up and rise to the occasion. So women, women we've, you know, we've come a long way, but there's still so much more. I think one of the saddest things that I see happen is not, women not pausing to help the woman next to them. I think that is a greater issue than access because if there isn't access, then we should be mavericks and make the opportunities come up. So it's pausing and extending an opportunity to the person next to you is very, very, very important. Um, but again, we shouldn't stifle anybody's opportunity or potential because the next great idea can be coming from the lady sitting next to you. That's a great point. Going back to um, the talks we heard earlier about like working together and teamwork and how that's sometimes more important in the workplace than just individual work. That's when innovation really grows right. and, is, and, and begins. So even if a person who comes to the table has no prior experience, that may actually be the opportunity because they're right. not confined to a certain process. So that creativity leads to innovation, leads to the next great idea. Right, right. As um, a country, our greatest strength is our diversity. Diversity, not just in ethnicity, but then also in gender and age. It's what, in America, makes it so great. So when there isn't an opportunity for women at the table, uh, we lose out as a society. Right. And as it was mentioned today, but it's commonly not known, Ada Lovelace, right? Before we think of men as being the coders, women were originally there as being the pioneers. And so why do we want to continue to create opportunities to allow women to go into the tech field? Because they're, uh, they're heavily underrepresented. And yeah. until we can find that equitable balance, it's important for us to, to make that space because without that, we won't get the richness of thought and perspective right. and uh, not to mention something that our college president Dr. Padron mentions a lot uh, talent is universal but opportunity is not yeah. so we have to create those opportunities for everyone uh, but particularly those who are underrepresented and at the moment women are heavily underrepresented in the tech field and you see that with some of the press of uh, a very male dominated tech industry where um, the perspective is not not heard as often so uh, so I think it's really important uh, for us as a community and obviously as, as a center we 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 try to support that as much as possible I agree I agree so my next question to you actually is why what is Miami Dade currently doing to encourage more women in STEM fields I'll speak from the idea center perspective because that that's where uh, I'm uh, focused is uh, to what I was uh, just alluding to earlier all our programming to make sure that we are also focused on doing outreach to a variety of organizations, whether it's the Women of Wynwood or hosting an International Women's Day event, so that there's a greater participation uh, of all ethnicities, all genders, uh, into our programming. So uh, we obviously, for any of our tech programs, we promote uh, and we do our outreach with uh, with Sandy and the you know the college to make sure we're reaching to those schools, to those communities where. We, we typically uh, may not go or others may not go. Right, right. So, uh, so we want to make sure that our programming at the Idea Center uh, supports the college's outreach. How important is it to have grit, resolve, and courage, resilience, and strength of character? Do you think it's important to have a positive attitude all the time, whether it's in the face of failure or success? I think that the you know, we can simplify it and say yes, yes to all of the above. But I think uh, the harder, the harder, the challenge there is how do we overcome the challenge, right? And how do we pick ourselves up? And we have to always keep in mind that the next great thing happened because of a failure somewhere along the way. And that 
failure caused the reaction to pause, rethink, and push forward. And, and, and we, we do have to do a better job of reminding ourselves of that, that you only learn through mistakes and that failure creates the opportunity to push further and to address other things. So I, those things are important. And you know, tying it back to your previous question on role models, I think taking, taking on and surrounding yourself with positive individuals and like-minded individuals allow you to fail in a safe space and to pick yourself up and move forward. When, and you don't have to do it alone. And that's, that's the beauty of it. And you just have to be careful on who you select to surround yourself with to get to that point, to be able to pick up and move on. Um, is that level of openness and understanding? Because that's how you become more resilient. That's how you become uh, when, you, when you're faced with adversity. So it's important to be uh, focused on how the failure can be a, an opportunity to, to learn a lesson. And so that's what we want to try to focus on, that it's in a place like the Idea Center, it's, it's a safe space to what Sandy mentioned, to be able to try here. Y if your business idea, as an example, doesn't work and you go through our program, we're there to support you. So even if you fail, if we can help you learn from it, or you grow from it and you refine. So iteration, the term of how do you get to, how did Uber get to its best model for how it serves customers? It wasn't at the first time. It was through iterating and, and taking that feedback and being honest to acknowledging what you don't and don't you know do and don't know, and then learning from it. So, but you need spaces where the cost of that failure isn't insurmountable because if you feel like you can't overcome that, then you may never try again. And that's what we don't want to do because it's through the effort and yeah. that you get to become more resilient. Right, right. And I think also one has to be open to the idea of feedback. I. Right. I I think sometimes people, mm. there's a level of shame or embarrassment in getting feedback, but that's, that's, that's where that innovation ends. So as you're going through this process, you have to be open to feedback yeah. because that perspective right. might be what you need to push through and get you to the next step. Right. What would you say is the best piece of advice you've received that you would like to share with others? I've had wonderful mentors in my life. Um, there may not be a single piece of advice, but one that comes to mind um, is uh, to be persistent. And persistence in my life and having, and, I, and I've gotten it. I've gotten it from the amazing women in my household. So there are mentors I have between my sister and my mother and my grandmother, mm -hmm. but then others in the field who have said to me, Romy, as you're committed to public service, um, it's not going to be easy. Uh, serving community because you're going to face a lot of challenges, but persistence uh, will help you uh, outlast right. the challenges. So I carry that with me a lot as a as a words of wisdom. I like that persistence will help you outlast the challenges. I think I think one of the things that that holds true for me, especially when when I am challenged, is to remember the journey. It's not about the moment that there is a bigger picture, there is a greater purpose. And uh, if as long as you maintain your focus on the purpose, you can overcome just about anything. And uh, I've noticed, and, and it's taken me a while to get to this point, but I've noticed that when I am most frustrated, it's because I lost sight of purpose. So, I, and that, that piece of advice came to me, as a matter of fact, through a sisterhood of friends of mine at my church, as a matter of fact. And, and it's not about being overly uh, preachy or religious because they're, right. they're women professionals just like I am. And right. we've had all sorts of challenges and maintaining a career, maintaining a home and trying to do mm -hmm. it all. I think that's a bigger challenge for women today. We're told you can do it all. And you fall into that yeah. trap that you can do it all. <laughs> but um, once you find purpose, things fall into place. And sometimes things right. fall off the mm -hmm. table because they were supposed to. But that's the purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had one other thought that came to mind uh, that I always carry with me as, as words of advice. Celebrate early and often. We sometimes forget to celebrate, yeah. as to what Sandy mentioned, the journey. So celebrate early and often. I think it's really important. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. And I really appreciate you talking to you. It was our pleasure. Thank you. This was wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity.
So we have a new speaker now. If you could just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. My name is Terry Carbonell, and I'm a pilot. Right now, I work part-time for the Monroe County Mosquito Control District, so I kill bugs, <laughs> which is kind of a fun thing to do. I've been a pilot for about 13 years. Wow, amazing. So a little, a few questions. I know that there's um, a huge gender gap when it comes to different fields, particularly like I'm into STEM and technology fields. Does that s apply to your field as well? Oh, absolutely. Right now, there's only about 6% of the pilot population is female. So there is an absolutely huge gender gap. I mean, we're still, female pilots are still an anomaly. And very often times when I've flown someplace, even when I'm by myself, I get out of the airplane and the first question that's asked by both men and women is where's the pilot? Wow. So I kind of jokingly look around both ways and say, oh my gosh, it's me. <laughs> That's so funny. How did you get into this? Um, I started flying when I was 44, so I got into being a pilot late in life. My, my husband was ill. He had Alzheimer's disease, and it became apparent to both of us that he didn't have much time left. And he loved airplanes, so he, long story short, asked me to get my pilot's license so he could spend whatever time he had left on this earth in an airplane. Wow. So 46 days later, I had my license. I studied. Amazing. In 46, 46 days. days. I was <gasps> highly motivated, and I studied, did, did my ground school and studies every night. And every morning, I was out at the airport at 7 o'clock and flew with my instructor for a couple of hours and took my check ride 46 days later and haven't looked back since. Incredible. So how important are role models to you and why? And would you say that you have someone in your life who impacted you to enter your career? Well, impacted definitely was, was my husband. I, husband. I never yeah. had any inkling my whole life to, f to fly an airplane. I'm a, I'm a licensed attorney. I went to law school. Wow. And then after law school, when when I got married, my husband and I wanted a business we could do together, so we started demolishing buildings, and we had a construction company and a bunch of employees and stuff, and we sold everything when he got ill. So really, I wouldn't be flying had he not asked me. Right. But throughout our lives, Mario was always a wonderful visionary for business, but he was born and raised in Cuba, so English was his second language, and he had a little more trouble kind of negotiating right. the, the business world than I did, so we made a good partnership. But after he um, after he passed away, I was looking for inspiration on what to do because I had done nothing but fly him around for three years. And right. uh, I got a call that morning. I was going to go talk to him at his gravesite. I got a call from a lady who said, I want you to come work for me and teach aviation to kids wow. and it was really like this big black cloud lifted up and I could I could see that that was really a calling of what right. I needed to do so from I guess his his dying wish is a gift that he left for me right. to share with other people wow so amazing. my mission is to meet with with kids boys and girls and and let them know how much is available in aviation. I mean, no matter what you want to do in life, there's a job for you in aviation. It's not just all about flying. Well, I guess that ties into my next question, which why is it important for you to empower people, I guess in particular women, to enter, um, I guess, minority fields such as yours? Well, all of, the, all of my jobs have been minority. <laughs> when I started practicing law, gosh, 35 years ago, I was one of a handful of women right. and then entered the construction field. I was one of a handful of women, much much to my mother's chagrin. <laughs> but um, I just think that women can do any anything they want to do. And the main the main things for a successful life are, you know, dedication, inspiration and perseverance. And no matter what you want to do, you can do that. But what I found in working with girls, I do a lot of work with the boys and girls clubs. And what I find is that women get the wrong messages, or I can't say the wrong messages, but they don't get powerful, inspirational messages from, from home. Right. The messages they get are, and the message I got from my mother was, you need to learn to cook and clean, you have right. to be a good housewife, you need to find a good man, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, that's, that's not going to happen. So I, 
I do like to cook and sew, cleaning, eh, not so much. <laughs> but but um, you really can, you can do whatever you dream to do. Right. And all you have to do is want it. There are so many resources out there for women. Um, the 99's International Organization for Women Pilots gives out tens of thousands of dollars of scholarships every year under our Amelia Earhart Scholarship Fund, and it's a fully paid flight training. We have Fly Now scholarships that provide $6,000 to, to flight training. There's academic scholarships, so if you want to be you know, an, an, an engineer, an aeronautical engineer, or something else dealing with aviation, we have academic scholarships. So there's a lot of resources out there available to women. All you've got to do is want it. Right. So how important do you think it is to have grit and passion and interest in um, whatever field you choose? And do you think that that's teachable or do you think that that's just something that comes with? I, I think it can be. I think it can be learned. I mean, and, and I, I have to go back and look at my own life. My my mother was she pushed me to do well in school. I was a nerdy kid in school. <laughs> I, mean, I, I always did well in school, but I. I don't need anyone to push me because I push myself hard enough. And most of the women that I've met in the aviation field, especially the pilots, they're all pretty well driven. So I would say it's something that, whether you're born with it or not, it's something that you have to internalize at some point. Right. And I think you can look around and say, gee, what I'm doing now isn't working. I don't feel like I'm on a good path. I have to change but you have to want to change. It's just like going on a diet mm -hmm. or learning how to knit or you know, doing any activity, learning how to paint. You have to decide you for yourself. You have to decide for yourself and you have to do it for you. It's the most important thing. You have to want it for you. Right. That's a great answer. What would you say is um, the best piece of advice you've received, in, you've received or something that you would like other people to know? In particular to aviation, just fly the plane. <laughs> and if you, if you take that to other aspects of your life, you have to focus on the primary task at hand. And in an airplane, the first thing is flying the plane. Second is you know, navigating, and third is communicating. So when everything else is going wrong, your first job is fly the plane. So mm -hmm. in life, your first job is fly the plane. Pick your goal and focus on your goal and take steps towards your goal. Right. There's going to be a lot of other things in your life that will distract you, boys being one of them. Fly. Other hobbies, friends, some not so good things, you know, drugs and there's a lot of there's a lot of bling out there that's always vying for your attention. And just like when you're a pilot dealing with an emergency, you have to put the blinders on and block out the bling and fly the plane. Wow, incredible. Well, thank you so much for talking with My me. My pleasure. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you. <laughs> Best of luck to you. Thank you. So we have someone new joining us now. If you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Hi, thank you. My name is Rosario Ballesteros. I'm proudly Colombian, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Beer Americas a company using immersive technologies to solve key problems like uh, workforce development and training. Wow, how cool. So we all know that there's a large gender gap for senior leadership positions in STEM and technology fields. What are some barriers that you faced being a woman in the STEM field? Well, I think there are some that are cultural, like uh, people are surprised when you are a, a woman leading in some areas when you use red nails, mm -hmm. pinky <laughs> shoes, <laughs> and, uh, and it's also not comfortable when you are having those cultural facts, facts because, well, you, you can avoid being in those kind of environments. But also as a, there is another component. We are not working together enough. We are not helping others enough to solve those things. Right. I agree. I agree. How important are role models and why? And do you have a role model in your life who helped your career and impacted you? Completely. <laughs> you <laughs> cannot live without a role model and dream big if you don't know somebody already that right. did something that you could dream. I have many role models, and I think I acquire a new one every time I see a brilliant woman, woman in, uh, in any place. 
Uh, I have my mother. She was my first boss. She trained me for job. She teach me how important it is to be passionate about what you are doing. And um, also my grandmother. She was working until she, ha she was 86. Wow. Then I know how important it is to keep your passion to the time. Yeah. And finally, I, I can see females all over the world changing things like, well, Ada Lovelace, for sure, and Adriana Ocampo in NASA, the, the training, uh, uh, leading uh, new, new uh, well, expeditions like New Horizons right, or, right. or a Pluto mission or Juno mission. Right. Why is it important for you to empower women and other minorities in STEM-related fields? Well, because... Uh, as, as you have more vari variety and diversity, uh, you have better results. You have more visions. Right. The world is big enough and the challenges are big enough if you, if you don't have uh, different visions, different perspectives of the things. You will just obtain the same result that we were obtaining before. Then if you want to reach better goals or bigger go biggest goals, you need to have variety and diversity and from also from the cultural side, from the ethnical side, from the um, background side. No, I'm, I'm originally a political scientist, and I'm in uh, state-of-the-art technology since seven years ago, but I'm not coming from there. Then I also think uh, in yourself, you can build that, that variety of skills, right. that diversity, right. and it's also a very important thing. Do you think that it's important to have a positive attitude towards everything you do, whether it's a failure or success? Well, the important thing is when you have a failure and you understand how much you are winning with this, it's like an investment. Not every investment is good, but you need to invest in some things to realize the final result. Then, uh, yes, I agree. That was a really it's good important. point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the best piece of advice that you've received or that you would give for W successful women in technology? Wow, I, I received many, but maybe thinking one of the things that, that uh, a mentor told me uh, a lot of years ago, a lot of years ago, was there cannot be a healthy business in a sick environment. If you are not keeping the environment as part of what you are doing, you will be in, in, in trouble. Mm. You will not be adding value to, to the world. And also, um, not too many years ago, I'm a Latina, I grew up in Colombia, and uh, I never realized I, w I was a minority because I was in the middle of a country where I was not a, mi a minority. Right. And when I moved to New York, I realized that I was a woman, Latina, in technology. I was a minority, minority. way far. You're the most yes. minority. And, uh, <laughs> and somebody told me, when jo we I it just arrived, um, you know, uh, privileged are invisible for the ones who have it. Right. You need to realize those invisible privileges that you have if you want to support others in the environment. Wow, that was really, really good advice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah, and I really you. appreciate your time. And I loved your talk. It was amazing. Thank you very much, Noah. Thank you. I'm super proud of being here. Thank you. So that's the end of our podcast. Um, thanks so much for listening. We're going to wrap up now and I had a great time.